Okay, so therefore, what's this going to look like? Well, I'm imagining, don't draw it in just yet. I'm imagining something like this, right? Now, do you see how this makes sense of the regions that we have? Look at the regions that you've got. See over here, you're like, oh, I'm supposed to end down in this corner. Well, the function we looked at first, well, it does end in this corner, it approaches this asymptote. But this guy, the one we're looking at right now, it ends in this corner, but it's going down, it's dropping away. Does that make sense? And of course, in the opposite corner, you can see it's going up into that direction. Does that make sense? Okay, so we used calculus, right? Now this next step is the part which I said, you're like, how would you know to do this? Well, we're gonna to get to this a bit later on. To work out exactly where it is, because see this line, this is one minus x, it's got the right gradient, but minus x also has the right gradient, and minus x minus one also has the right gradient. So which of these is the oblique asymptote, okay? I want us to come back to the original function. I've run out of space over here. So this is the original function. Remember, I separated this guy out for the purpose of differentiation. Do you remember that? And that's why I wrote it with this negative index. But if you write it without the negative index, like so, okay, I can think about this in terms of limits again. And I have it in a more useful form than what I had before, right? Um, the limit of y is the limit of this. Let's just substitute in that. Now, do you remember you told me? This guy here, it approaches zero, right? As x gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, what about this guy? What does it do? This guy, the denominator gets bigger. It does exactly the same thing as that. It doesn't do it quite as fast, because this is squared. But this also goes to zero, does it not? Also goes to zero. So therefore, this is going to go toward this. Now. I could have tried to put infinity into here, but you don't get something useful out of it. It just blows up. It just becomes infinity, okay? But what this is telling you is that what you get left with, like this part vanishes away. It sort of doesn't contribute anything meaningful as x approaches very large values, right? So all you get left with is this guy. This is your oblique asymptote. y equals that, okay? So therefore, I can now come back to my original graph at last, and I can put on my oblique asymptote like so. This is y equals minus x. Okay, now I have enough information. Let's have a think about this. How can I go through all the regions I'm supposed to, hit all the intercepts I'm supposed to, and also um, match up to all the asymptotes that I have now? I've got all of them, okay? Well, let's have a look at this left-hand side. Have a look at this side here. Okay, I'm gonna have to go up toward this asymptote, right? So I guess I'm gonna start from this intercept and I'm gonna go up toward the asymptote, like that. It gently curves, because it doesn't actually get there, right? What about down here? What's it gonna do? Well, it's, it's, got, it's got another asymptote to go toward, doesn't it? The vertical one. So it's just gonna sort of lean down like that. There you go, well, that's it, okay? What about on the other side? Well, it sort of does the same thing, but in, in reverse, right, or rotated around, in fact, which is not a coincidence. If you have a look up here, you've got to go toward this vertical asymptote, like that, like so. And then down here, I've got an oblique asymptote to approach, okay, like that. There's the graph. Now, this is a strange beast. Uh, because of this oblique asymptote, it's so strange, you're really used to seeing things like this. Uh, and the reason why is because we start with these, because it's easy to find out what their horizontal asymptotes are, okay? But now you know calculus. Now you know enough to be a bit suspicious and say, wait, it's going towards something else. What is it actually specifically going toward, okay? Now, one last quick question. Um, for these guys here, you know how I showed you some weird versions where you have like a horizontal asymptote like this? And sometimes it sort of crosses and then it, it goes like that, right? Now, how do I know that something like this isn't happening over here? How do I know, for instance, that up here, it doesn't actually sneak over the asymptote and then come back down? I'll use a different color because that sounds really weird. Like this. How do I know it doesn't do that? You've got two ways that you can do. I'll give you a clue. One's with calculus and one's without. Any thoughts? Yeah. Okay, so uh, which function is even that you're thinking of? Right, it's not even function, no. So, so it's even, but like, the right one, you can't cross the 
You're talking about this one here? Yeah, that one. Yep, that's true. Yep, okay. So you're absolutely right. I can't cross vertical asymptotes, okay? Why is that, by the way? Think of where we got the vertical asymptote from. Tell me why I can't cross it. It's a discontinuity, right? Because look, you can't, you can't put in x equals zero, the whole thing blows up, okay? But remember, the horizontal and by extension, the oblique asymptotes, they only tell you about the edges of the graph. They say nothing about the inside, okay? Uh, can you see, like look near here, the origin? The oblique asymptote goes right through there, but the graph doesn't care. He's like, I, I couldn't care less if you were there. It just goes straight up and ignores it, okay? So in here, you can cross. If you're like talking about the symmetry, well, I can have it on both ends, okay? Like, in theory, I can do that. Why not? Why doesn't it do that? Hmm. We, uh, we differentiated, right? We differentiated over, here it is. There's the derivative, okay? If it were to do this weird wiggly thing, right? This wiggle around, this wiggle around. Do you see, it looks to me like there would be a stationary point of some kind, right? A stationary point? See how it sort of goes up and then it turns, yeah? Well, how would I find such an object? How would I do that? I would say the first derivative should be zero, right? Well, let's see what happens. I have the first derivative, it's over there. Uh, minus one over x squared minus one equals zero, yeah? So let's see what happens. Uh, I'm trying to solve for x squared, so I guess I'll add one to both sides. Uh, I guess I'll multiply through by x squared now. Um, hmm. um, <laughs> in the scheme that I'm working in, that's, um, that makes me sad. I, I can't find solutions for here on the Cartesian plane. I can't find solutions elsewhere, but I'm not, I don't have them. I've got the Cartesian plane right now, okay? So this means I have no real solutions. No real solutions. Um, so if there's no spot at which it turns, then I don't think I can really do that, okay? So these questions are hard, right? Working this kind of thing out. I will just give you one more clue, uh, which is to say, when you get given questions like this now, you'll get given them in a form where you can just divide through. You can just divide through. Um, I can make this question a teeny bit harder and you can't pull off the trick that I just did. I can do this. Why does this make things so much more difficult? It's just a harmless constant. What's the big problem? How did I work this out before? What did I do? To get this exact equation, I didn't just guess. I actually got that exact equation. What did I do? I, um, yeah, Eric, you got a thought? You took the limit of why does x approaches infinity and you have two separate, well, one fraction and... Yeah, so, so this is the key step over here. Do you remember it? Like, that's why I still have it written down here. This is where I got y equals minus x from, but I could only do that because I could split apart this fraction into two. You see that? Into here and here. And I could do it relatively easily, right? You cannot do it relatively easily here. You need a new tool, a tool I'll introduce to you in the topic called polynomials, called polynomial division, right? You can divide this thing through. It's a fraction after all, but we just don't have the tools yet to do that. So at the moment, while I haven't given you a hammer yet, I'm not gonna give you nails that I expect you to work out. You'll get questions like this, which you can just do by hand, more or less. But later on, once we develop more tools, just like now that you have calculus, we give you harder stuff, later on, um, I will give you a question like this and I'll teach you how to do it then. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. Um, in the exercises you've been given in Cambridge, they sneak in these oblique asymptotes every now and then. Not frequently, but sometimes. And you will see it basically like this. Um, you can use calculus to work out, okay, it's not just approaching zero. And you can use this kind of trick here usually. You can actually just divide through the whole thing and you will get something at the other end. Sometimes, just as a bonus, we won't do it in detail, but sometimes, just as a bonus, you don't even get an oblique asymptote. For example, if I gave you something like this, what happens when I split it apart, when I do this trick here? What am I gonna get? What are the two fractions or two things? Yeah, x squared plus one over x. Now, when you take the limit of this thing, when you take the limit of this, see how this guy's gonna to go towards zero as x gets huge? So what you get left behind is, and not just any infinity, it's this infinity, right? It's a, I know what this shape looks like. It looks like this. It looks like that. So in fact, this is gonna have, I can tell you exactly what this looks like. Uh, this is gonna look like this. Oop. 
that's a weird shape, right? This is an asymptote that's sort of curved. I don't even know if it's actually called an asymptote when it's curved, but it, it approaches it and gets closer and closer and closer, just like all the rest of the asymptotes that we've got. Um, by the way, that spot there is negative one. How did I know? Have a think. Look careful, you can work that out. It's the x-intercept. How do I usually work out x-intercepts? To work out x-intercepts, I let y equal zero, right? So where does y equal zero? Well, it depends on this numerator, where this equals zero, right? So you can see if I put negative one in there, the numerator becomes zero. And if that's not obvious enough, then you can do d uh, sum of cubes. What's the sum of cubes? x squared, same opposite, always positive. There you go. You see, x equals negative one, the whole thing collapses. So you get some weird, interesting shapes. Um, but at the moment, all you have to do is to separate out. You don't need any of this weird polynomial division stuff, and you can work it out from there. Um, you could shade regions, and you would get this shape. And you can work out where the stationary point is as well. How would you do that? Yeah, first derivative of this guy, it's actually quite easy. You can work it out. Let's just work it out right now. If that's y, what's the first derivative? Uh, the first derivative will be 2x. Yeah, good. So that's my first derivative. So I want this to be 0 for stationary points. So stationary points means this equals 0. Uh, let's see here. 2x equals 1 on x squared. Does that look OK? Mm, x cubed equals a half. Does that look OK? So what's this x coordinate going to be? I think it's going to be 1 on the cube root of 2, isn't it? Whatever that happens to be. I have no idea what it is. But there you go. Okay. 